Coming up, we'll take a look at a Senate bill that could help save lives of adults that are missing. And the University of Pikeville celebrates two doctors with a new research center. And after dry and mild weather this week, we are tracking some changes by this weekend. Those details on the way as Mountain News First at Four continues. Mountain News First at Four continues. When a child goes missing, an alert called an Amber Alert is sent to your phone to help law enforcement find the missing child. However, what happens when an adult goes missing? Well, in Kentucky, there is no alert, but one state senator is looking to change that. And Jessica Umbro spoke with the senator who's looking to make Ashanti alerts a common practice to help track down missing adults here in the Commonwealth. Senator David Yates is the sponsor of Senate Bill 45, a bill that would establish the Ashanti alert system here in Kentucky. He says it's a tool that local police departments would and should have in their arsenal. Just because someone's 18 years old or 19 years old or maybe even 20 years old doesn't mean their life is not valuable. And if we know that they've been kidnapped, they're abducted, they're being trafficked through Kentucky, let's put that out to the public. Senator David Yates says state police would work with law enforcement to establish the missing person was taken forcefully and that they are in imminent danger if not found quickly. Guidelines that will help to avoid the alerts from being overused. There's several checks in place. I don't believe that the law enforcement abuses that. I think they use whatever tools they can, including the public, to find people. Georgetown Assistant Police Chief Josh Nash says expanding the Amber Alert type system could help with connecting Kentucky's law enforcement to other states, such as Indiana and Illinois, which already have Ashanti systems in place. Being able to work with other states in, in a situation like this, just like an Amber Alert, it will it will benefit that person that we might be looking for. Last legislative session, a similar bill failed to gain enough traction to pass. But Senator Yates says this legislation cannot afford another year of waiting. We're not the guinea pig. We're not recreating. We're not creating the wheel for the first time. It's been done. It's been implemented and it works and it works within the infrastructure that we've already have here in place. Senate Bill 45 did pass through the Military Veterans Affairs and Public Protection Committee last week. It is now on its second reading in the Senate chamber in Georgetown. Jessica Umbro WKYT. A new development at the University of Pikeville hopes to provide more research and growth opportunities for students. WYMT's Buddy Forbes has more about the research and entrepreneurship incubator. The University of Pikeville is expanding opportunity with a new research facility devoted to two area doctors. The Satchdiva Research and Entrepreneurship Incubator will create a space off campus for biomedicine projects, small business incubation, and environmental research. The building honors two Pikeville doctors, Rakesh and Seema Satchdiva, who you Pike representatives say have been influential in the success of the Kentucky College of Osteopathic Medicine. Now, with their support for this project, they can be part of the growth for generations to come. That it'll open doors to research opportunities, to collaborations with, with outside entities, as well as provide our students with opportunities that otherwise they wouldn't have. Building plans include a greenhouse, research space, and much more. Those involved say it is about providing a space where students can grow, thrive, and explore. In Pikeville, Buddy Forbes, WYMT Mountain News. Buddy, thank you. We'll have more about the off-campus facility coming up tonight at 6. It was one year ago when a spontaneous outpouring turned a typical chapel service into more than two weeks of non-stop praise and worship. In that time, more than 50,000 people visited Asbury University in Central Kentucky. Lucy Bryson sat down with university leaders to reflect on how the outpouring changed the course of the school forever. So when you walk back in here after a year and you see that, what does that mean now? I think at its core, it just reminds me about the kind of movement that the Lord started a year ago. It's true north. Holiness unto the Lord is true north for the Christian faith. The phrase is the focal point of Hughes Auditorium. But on February 8th, 2023, Hughes Auditorium became the focal point of the entire world. This was just a service where people lingered right around early to mid afternoon that day, February 8th. I knew that this was different. I remember like just being in here and first 
wanting to tell all my friends who weren't in Hughes. I don't really fully understand how to explain it to you, but like there's something special going on and we need to keep telling people about it. Thousands of people traveled to a town that typically only holds a fraction of that number to kneel at the altar and see the unusual sight that could only be described by, as Professor Rob Lim says, an awakening. There was a resurgence amongst youth and young adults, not simply based in Kentucky, but globally, recognizing that all of the turmoil that they're seeing around the world today, that there is a faith that seems to provide answers to that. One year later, Hughes is empty. Things are normal again, but the impact still lingers on. Would you say that it's changed the atmosphere here? A hundred percent it's changed the atmosphere. It's only history now. It may have started in the tiny town of Wellmore, Kentucky, but managed to make a mark on the Christian faith forever. The difference this year is just so marked uh, from, from where we were uh, prior to the outpouring and uh, we're, we're living with gratitude for that. We are tracking some more cloudy conditions on this Thursday afternoon. Also some more above average weather and be sure to enjoy the dry conditions because rain chances are on the way as we go into late tonight, Friday and this weekend. Let's take a live look across the mountains right now. And as you can see, overcast conditions continue across the region from I-64 at Moorhead to Pikeville, also from Buffalo Mountain and the London Corbin Airport at this hour as well. Those current temperatures in the 60s for most of us up to 65 in Jackson, 63 in Pikeville. Phil also Irvin 61 for hazard in London at this hour. So once again, we are well above average on this February afternoon up on the radar. We are dry for now, but notice as we zoom out, we are tracking a little bit of moisture over western Kentucky, western Tennessee, also northern Mississippi. And that will continue pushing off to the east as we go into late Thursday, early Friday. No severe weather, no widespread rain, but a few sprinkles are possible by late tonight. Also early tomorrow and more widespread showers are likely as we go into this weekend. Not going to rain 24 seven this weekend, but more rounds of rain are on the way. Also trending cooler as we go into next week. All those details plus your full seven day forecast on the way in just a few minutes. Steve. Cameron, thank you. A structural collapse earlier this week in the Cary community of Knott County left one person trapped under the rubble. The Heinemann Volunteer Fire Department and Perry County Ambulance Service responded to the scene. WYMT's Olivia Calfee has more. Heinemann Volunteer Fire Chief Preston Hayes tells me the department as well as Perry County Ambulance were dispatched to the scene at approximately 3.30 Tuesday afternoon. He says when they arrived at the scene, they knew this call was unlike their typical dispatch calls. However, he says due to their training and equipment, they were able to remove the person safely and get them the proper care needed. We had to use hydraulic spreaders that we would normally use. It's referred to as jaws of life to be able to lift uh, the trusses and those wall studs and that framing to relieve the pressure to, to free the patient. So it really put our uh, training and knowledge to the test to, to try to remove that victim. An official with Perry County Ambulance at the Knott County office says once the individual left their care, they were reportedly then flown to another hospital. But for now, I am reporting in Knott County, Olivia Calfee, WYMT Mountain News. No other fire departments were called in to help. Chief Hayes says thanks to donations and grants, their department was well equipped for the situation. We'll have more from Chief Hayes tonight at 6. Governor Andy Bashir announced the certification of a build ready site today in Jackson County. WYMT's Chandler Wilcox went to Jackson County and has more on the impact. More than 17 acres qualifying for a 140,000 square foot building pad adds up to a build ready site here in Jackson County. The site is part of the Jackson County McKee Industrial Development Authority. Jackson County Judge Executive Shane Gabbard says the site is vital to economic growth in the community. It's the most developable piece of property that we have for industry. And, uh, you know, with the factory that used to be here and hit employing 700 people, uh, we've already got the infrastructure in place for another company to come in and build a building on 
uh, and we've got a workforce here that is ready to go to work. An electronics company was in this space before a fire in 2005. The site has not been used since. In Jackson County, Chandler Wilcox, WYMT Mountain News. Chandler, thank you. A news release from the governor's office said there are roughly 21 build-ready sites in the state, including that new one in Jackson County. Coming up on First at Four, as Super Bowl is expected to have mil hundreds of millions of viewers, and one new law makes it even more exciting. Plus, enjoy the dry weather because rain chances are on the way for this weekend. Timing out those showers after this break.